Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. Welcome to Aspects of Writing with your host, James Kelly. For the next 60 minutes, we'll explore every aspect of writing, including how to create, format, and even sell your work. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free, 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's get right. Here's your host, James Kelly. Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly. On the show tonight, my guests are um, author Judy McFadden and author, director, producer Don Lewis Barnhart. Um, I will always start the show with a few fun facts. So we're going to start off. I'll read the first one. The first fact is best selling novelist Pat Conroy self published his first book, The Boo. He spent thousands on printing and promoting the book. Today, of course, his advances run much, much higher. Among his best selling books are The Prince of Tides, The Great Santini, The Lords of Discipline, and The Water is Wide. Don, would you like to read the second one? Well, sure, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. I, I kind of like the idea of uh, doing, as you call it, the few fun facts about famous writers and what they have done and how they got there. I think that's an interesting... Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you don't have to thank me. i just thanking <laughs> you for being here. This is kind of a fun... Uh, situation. Judy is uh, nudging me over there. She wants to get on with it, <laughs> so I will. The uh, second fun fact that uh, you have given me is American poet E.E. E. Cummings. He published, self-published, I might say, uh, No Thanks, a volume of poetry which was financed by his mother. Now, see, if my mother were still alive, <laughs> I'd call her up. There you go. That's right. Yeah, because I need help on my self-publishing <laughs> routines. On the half-title page, uh, Mr. Cummings was kind enough to acknowledge the 13 publishers who rejected that book, which, by the way, went on to be one of his classics, which I think we're going to discuss we later on about being rejected later. and Absolutely. so forth. Okay. Judy, would you like to take number three? I'll take number three, and All I right. don't want Don to nudge me to get even now. <laughs> <laughs> William Shakespeare and Agatha Christie, and that's really a really good pair there, mm -hmm. are tied as the best-selling fiction authors of all time, according to the September 15, 2008 edition of the Times Online. It is estimated that they have sold over 4 billion copies of their books worldwide. And I, I'd like to point out that's 4 billion copies each. Ooh. Each. Ooh. I, I, would, I really had no idea. William Shakespeare, I thought, I had no idea Agatha Christie sold that many Well, books. I'll catch them at some point. Okay. <laughs> I'm right behind you, Judy. <clears throat> I have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> um, the fourth fact is, according to w w Wikipedia, which ranks him as six on the best-selling fiction authors all, of all time in any language, is author Sidney Sheldon. Sidney Sheldon's first sale as a writer was for a poem he sold for $5 at the age of 10. Um, the Columbus Dispatch reported in their January 31st, 2007 edition, he was one of the world's most translated authors, selling more than 600 million books in 180 countries. Wikipedia goes on to say Sidney Sheldon authored 18 novels. He wrote over 200 television scripts, 25 motion pictures, and six Broadway plays. Um, among Sidney's accomplishments for which he created, co-produced, and wrote are the television series I Dream of Jeannie, The Patty Duke Show, and Heart to Heart. He wrote all but two dozen scripts in the five years of I Dream of Genie, uh, was on the air. And I'm sure, Don, you can relate to all this uh, having been a director yourself, because I know you direct over 400 episodes. Well, yeah, and uh, but not like this guy. Uh, to I write mean, him is amazing. Uh, to write that many is amazing. Well, it is amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, what was also interesting is, is that he used uh, pseudonyms when he would write. He wrote, he wrote under the name Mark Rowan, Alan Devon, and uh, Christopher Galato. And he did this because he didn't want people to know um, that it was him writing. He, his explanation for that was that uh, he did this because he felt his name was appearing too often in the credits as the creator, producer, and writer of the various television series on the air at the same time. Mm -hmm. I guess he thought people would get tired of seeing his name. Well, you know, people chalk it up to ego right. a lot of times. you know. And this man is obviously so accomplished and so uh, talented and, you know, he was writing books and, and novels and stuff, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's writing I Dream of Genie." Well, I mean, the, the, the status of Hollywood 
no wonder we use pseudonyms because the, the standard is a little bit less than writing a novel to write a, to write a television oh, show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so maybe that was one of the reasons that he was using uh, different names. Yeah, and I actually had the honor and privilege of meeting him, and it was really an honor to meet him. I bet it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would be interesting. Now, if you are just now turning in, you are listening to Aspects of Writing with m- myself, which is James Kelly here on KLAV. Um, before we get to into today's topic, uh, preparing your work for print, I'd like to introduce my guests and let them tell you a little bit about themselves. My first guest is Judy McFadden. Uh, Judy, why don't you tell us about yourself? Well, I am the author of Life with McDuff, Lessons Learned from a Therapy Dog. And it's about a nine-year journey with a unique, hilarious, and frustrating Scottish Terrier therapy dog and the life lessons that he taught me along the way during his life and after his death. He was very unique because he was a spirit dog, Mm -hmm. and he touched a lot of people and changed lives, and mine most of all. And I'm a coal miner's daughter. (laughs) I was born and raised at uh, Uniontown, Pennsylvania, and uh, my background really had a lot to do with me actually writing the book because I grew up in a, a background where all nationalities lived and worked together and helped each other. And I had a love of animals, particularly dogs. So uh, when I grew up, I combined my love of animals and my desire to um, help people, and I became a Therapy Dog International volunteer. Okay. Don, I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Um, Don is uh, Don Lewis Barnhart. His, uh, his re- resume reads like a who's who in Hollywood. <laughs> his latest book is The Sweet Talkers. Um, Don, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a coal miner. <laughs> You're a coal miner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the daughter. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I don't know how I got into the business, to tell you the truth. I mean, seriously, I had no aspirations to become director, a writer, or anything. I mean, I just kind of went along with what was happening at that particular time in my life. I worked, uh, going way, way, way back, I worked with uh, Sinatra, and Sammy Davis Jr. used to bum cigarettes off of me because he liked <laughs> the brand I was smoking. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I hung out with those guys, but I was a punk. Don't get me wrong. I was not socially, uh, you know, um, with these folks. I was a, I was a punk. But I did work my way through that period of time and ended up uh, as a disc jockey uh, in the 60s working, you know, various stations. And I realized uh, that I didn't have the talent to get to uh, a number one spot in L.A. radio. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I wrote a book about it called The Sweet Talkers. And the Sweet Talker is the disc jockey who's trying to manipulate his listeners uh, to go on to, to buy the products and whatever, but it's a funny, uh, laugh out loud, I hope, um, uh, uh, book uh, uh, kind of exposing the interacting of sleazy radio. Oh, okay. Uh, it's kind of, and it's funny, it's got a <laughs> you know, kick to it. But then I got, uh, you know, before that, before writing this particular novel, I started, uh, it was assistant director. I worked on General Hospital as a stage manager and Sonny and Cher and tons of others. And finally, uh, there was an opening on Benson Mm -hmm. with Robert Guillaume, and I got a job as a director on that show and went over to, um, when the show was ended, I I took the tape and went over to um, Mork and Mindy. And Gary Marshall, who was a big shot of his own self, uh, told me beforehand, he said, if you get yourself a job and you bring me the tape, I, I will hire you. I will, I will give you a job. Well, I thought it was all BS. And uh, I came back to him after the Benson episode and handed it to him, and he said, okay. And they maneuvered me back on Mork and Mindy, and I worked there. I was on that show for four years, and I ended up directing a few at the end. And I think I'm the only uh, director that I know of that has directed Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters at the same time. Oh, wow. Now, now that had got, to be fun. Well, not only was it fun, it was a kick in the pants, but you got to understand you're not really directing them. You don't direct them. They're directing you. <laughs> They're well, directing you. <laughs> kind of, yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of times I went home and uh, wept. <laughs> oh, my. I can uh, but uh, they were nice, and it worked out fine, and, you know. And then I worked on Saved by the Bell for eight seasons. and Yeah, you're actually on Wikipedia for that, you know. Oh, really? yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah, you sure Wikipedia. is. Wikipedia? Oh, yeah, Wikipedia. Is that a name of a car? I have no idea. <laughs> 
have no idea what All that right, is. Don, we're going to have to update you on, on the okay, internet here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> update me. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask a few questions, and you both have covered a little bit of this, but Judy, what inspired you to write your first novel? What inspired you to write this book? I, I didn't have a choice. I okay. didn't have a choice. The, the, the Something got in me, and it had to come out. And I actually woke up every morning at 4.20, with just ideas running around in my head about, about McDuff. And I would say I was going to get up the next morning and start to write, and I would forget them. So I thought, well, I'll have to write, write them, you know, write them down. So I would turn the light on, write a sentence or two, get back in bed, have another thought, turn the light on, get it, and I did that for a while, and then I got smart and got a little handheld a recorder with a <laughs> with a light on it, yeah. <laughs> and I thought I had it worked out. But I got up the next morning, and when I listened, it was like, "What are you doing about me?" <laughs> so I couldn't. That was the end of that. But I literally <laughs> had to write this book, and 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 it, something came in and through me the whole process. And had I, had you written anything prior to this? I learned to write the book while I wrote the book, literally. Mm-hmm. I'm not right. saying that. I learned to write the book while I wrote the book. And I, I, anybody listening out there, if I did it, you can do it. Now, you also self-published this book. Yes, I did, because um, Don will probably tell you about the rejections from publishers. But when I finished my manuscript in mid-2008, the country was in the midst of a big, deep recession. And the publishers, Simon and & Schuster and Random House, they were laying off. And a lead I had into Hardcourt when I called, they told me, we're not accepting manuscripts. So I didn't have a choice. I, I knew I was not going to go through a traditional publisher. So I explored various aspects of self-publishing, uh, vanity press, p- uh, pr- print-on-demand, and e-books. And then I decided to form my own company, Summit Mountain Publishing, and published it myself. Um, what advice would you give uh, an author and writer, up-and-coming author and writer, in trying to get into the business? Well, one thing I, I think that you should uh, get in with a writer's group. I belong to the Henderson Writers Group, okay. and there are people there when you have questions about uh, things that uh, you have not, no knowledge of, they're there to help you. So that's one thing. And the other thing is read books and and well I say I read books I read uh, books on how to write because I I didn't even remember when I started to write I didn't know a transitive from an intransitive verb the b the b verbs you're supposed to avoid they weren't buzzing around anywhere in my head you know I th- also I think what's important here is well go ahead I'm sorry J- J- go ahead no that's not and so I just my advice is to to um it, it's easier, number one, if you learn about writing before you start to write the book the way I did. And secondly, uh, align yourself with, with like-minded people, with people who, who are, are, are authors or aspiring authors. I think that's what I was going to say is that even if you're uh, a journalist or you have a journalistic background or you've gone to college and studied, it's still important to be a part of a writer's group or someone that you can bounce your ideas off of. I know, Don, you have a son. You, I'm sure you bounce a lot of your ideas off of him. Um, you need to have someone who's going to read your work, help you critique it. Uh, well, the Henderson inform- Writers Group, when I started to write, every week I would go to, to the meeting and read a chapter or read and get critique back. And, and at the time that I uh, started to write uh, Life with McDuff back in 2007, there were people uh, in the group that were uh, published authors and, and really knowledgeable, and that helped me tremendously. And where can people learn more about your book? Well, on my website, www.lifewithmcduff.com, and if uh, you go to Amazon.com, I, I checked before I came down, and I was told if, it, if you're at 500000 on Amazon, you're pretty good, and I was 219000 Oh, good. Wow, good. Yeah, so, uh, but it's at Barnes & Noble. Um, if it's not on, uh, on the brick and mortar, you can get it online. It's at uh, Borders in Australia if you want to get from there. Uh, tar- Tower, um, Target, Sears even, believe it or not. And, and the name of the book again? Life with McDuff, Lessons Learned from a Therapy Dog. By? Judy McFadden. All right. <laughs> Coal miner's daughter. All right. Don, I'm going to ask you, and you've mentioned a little bit of your inspiration, but re- what really inspired you to write your first novel? Uh, a screenplay that I wrote. Okay. And uh, when I came up here from Los Angeles to, to live here and play golf and 
you know, try to figure out what I wanted to do. When I left the show that I was working on, the excuse was, well, goodbye, folks. I'm going to go write. And, of course, everybody looked at me like I was nuts. You're going to go what? And I said, I'm going to go write. And they said, okay, well, you know, give me a th- go going away party. And I came to Las Vegas and played golf and wrote. But I had written scripts before. They hadn't sold, but I had written screenplays before. And I had five or six of them. And I one day just went, wait a minute, nobody's going to buy my stuff. Um, because, A, my age, they're looking for 23-year-old writers, you know, mm-hmm. action right. writers, you know. And I don't do that. I write character stuff with comedy. Anyway, um, I looked at all my scripts, my screenplays, and I went, wait a minute. I like this one. I like the story in that one. I like the comedy in this one. And I like uh, the characters in that one. So I started writing novels from the screenplays. I think we talked about that earlier, that mm-hmm. both of us, I, that's what mm-hmm. I do as well. I sure. usually will write the script, and then I'll turn that into a novel. Well, all of a sudden, you realize that you, c- you can flesh it out, and you can go wherever you want to go with it. Yeah. And that's what I did. That was my first script. Was, uh, my first novel was, was based on one of the screenplays. What, how, uh, why did you decide to self-publish? Because... And this is gonna get could get into <laughs> some stuff here. Well, prepare here. yourself, we're, folks. We're, we're, we're sitting here Pre- waiting for prepare this. Prepare well, yourself, I folks. Ha- I have some venom that's been stashed in my back <laughs> pockets uh, for a long time about that. I uh, I sat I sat at my home and I got I went through all the steps, went through the uh, the internet, went through all the steps trying to find out publishers, and agents, and producers of this kind of stuff. And I started sending out s- things to them and uh, you know I was stupid I, I was kind of uneducated about how to do that but I learned I, le- I read about the query letters and all that kind of stuff and so I manufactured as best I could the necessary ingredients to be able to you know get some response and I tried it with uh, with uh, 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 portions of the script uh, uh, just a, a just a, a paragraph I tried it with different ways mm-hmm. I sent I sent out over uh, close to 400 query letters wow. of all types of format, mm-hmm. and I got back zero. Not even an answer of any kind. I got back zero. Wow. And uh, well, I, ha- I that that's a lie, Jimmy. I call you Jimmy <laughs> that's now because right. we're you know we're familiar with each other. <laughs> I'm a coal miner. She's a coal miner's daughter. <laughs> And so I figure I can call you Jimmy. You know, <laughs> if right. I'm in trouble, I say, hey, Jimmy, send down a rope. That's right. That's right. That's um, what I'm here for. <laughs> well, there you go. We all have some place to be. <laughs> anyway, I, I did get back a couple of, uh, couple about two, I think. And they were, dear Don, thank you for your, you know, your, your contribution. You know, and, and it was, but it was a rejection. Right, yeah. But after all that time and had all that energy and all that stuff, I was so livid at the business that I almost gave it up. And I thought, no, no, screw it. Uh, my, my, my stuff is too good for that, to give it up right. th- that quickly. You know, and I, I'm going to have to see it through. So my son, who is very educated and very smart in the publishing of, of his CDs, he's a stand-up comedian, so he puts out CDs to everywhere, and he, you know, he's very good at it. And his wife, my daughter-in-law, she, she does the covers, the graphics, and she's very good at what she does. And so I, you know, went and self-published. And I'm happy I did, my theory being Mm -hmm. that if somebody in the studio business or somebody in the publishing business goes and says, well, I'm going to try this book, because they do that. Right. They they, they skim them or they read them or they have readers. They have slush piles. Oh, yeah. And I figured that maybe mine has a shot to be, you know, that's about the only chance I think I have at this stage, so. Huh? I, I, I don't know if that we'll answers your question. We'll see if that question. works. Pardon me? Well, hopefully that will work. Well, then. I'll call yeah. you, Jim, and Please then we'll, do. we'll yeah. have coffee, and I'll, I'll say it worked. I, 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 am I invited <laughs> to the premiere of this? Your Absolutely. Okay. First right. row, Thank center. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give? Kind of you're giving advice on this. What would you What would you advise an up-and-coming author or writer? Can I go back into that publishing Absolutely. morons that, uh, Absolutely. that will not uh, do it, anything? It is important. I think it is important. Well, I think anybody listening to this says, well, who is this guy? Who does he think he is when you just read something about um, uh, Sidney Sheldon, who wrote millions of copies, you know, mm-hmm. sold millions right. of copies? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you say, well, who is this guy that's on the radio now giving us advice if he hasn't sold anything? 
My, uh, my wife uh, at one time said, if you haven't sold, it's a hobby. And I thought about that at great length, about, about what's important in my work. So I kind of like made adjustments and kept my ego in check and say, well, uh, okay, let's, let's go forward. And I think I will not uh, give it up. And I think that anybody listening uh, would say, I'm not going to give it up either. Well, and we mentioned two authors in the beginning, you know, Pat Conroy and mm-hmm. E.E. E. Cummings, who both self-published to get started. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe there's more to that than people realize. I mean, I, I would never steer anyone away from trying to get published to a major publisher. I mean, that's great if, if you can accomplish that. But even, Judy, we were talking earlier um, when we first came in in the conference room how difficult that is just to get the attention of a publisher. And it doesn't matter how great the query letter is. I mean, Especially really when you're a first-time author. Yes, absolutely. Well, I've written four books now, four novels, and they're all uh, uh, close to 400 words. Uh, pages, words. Yeah. Well, that's an easy write, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that Thank you be, very much. I'm done. That would be a very <laughs> short story. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tabloid, if you ask me. But uh, I, you know, they're all 400 page uh, novels, and a lot of work went into them. Um, unfortunately, I uh, hadn't uh, did not have an editor or one I could trust, mm-hmm. and um, not having the uh, ends to the major publishing houses. It was, I, I was reticent and, and, and actually afraid of turning my book over to a student editor mm-hmm. that may or may not know how I write. And Judy was saying she had to. She got up. She was spiritually. Uh, she it really sp- was. And she had this drive about this book that she had to write. Right. I had written all the screenplays before, so I knew where I was going. Right. But... Um, well, and the point you were trying to make, too, is about with, with the editing process. Last show I had, we actually went into this in, in great detail. And it is interesting how each one of us had a different experience with our, with our editors along the way. Um, I, I really had horrible experiences in the beginning. I, I would go out and pay $2,000 for someone to do something and get it back. It was horrible. I'd go spend another two or 3000 for someone to do it. It would be horrible. My best experience has been I, I actually went to UNLV on one book and— had a professor there edit it for me. Good. good <laughs> I mean, you know, it free? isn't always uh, well, not free, but oh. <laughs> close to it though. <laughs> well, you know, I I didn't have that experience because I have a secretarial background. Okay. And and my grammar and spelling, uh, you know, wasn't really bad, but I found that um, you get so close to it. Mm-hmm. I, I rewrote it like four times because, as I said, I literally learned how to write the book while I was writing the book. But you get so close to it and you look at it so many times until you can't see things. You know, you kind of gloss over them. So <laughs> uh, I had um, uh, really the uh, uh, pr- some people in the Henderson Writers Group did uh, the editing on mine. I well, would like to ask you, Don, where people can find your books as well. Uh, well, they're on Amazon and Kindle. Um, they're at my website, which is uh, www.donlewisbarnhart.com. That's original, Don. <laughs> <laughs> That's original. <laughs> That's original. <laughs> DonLewisBarnhart.com. Don Don. That's right. Well, my son's name is Don Barnhart, and so he's on, uh, he's on the web all over the map because of his uh, comedy stuff. So I had to you put had to Lewis, the in, Lewis there. in there. I had to put Lewis in there to right. keep, it, uh, keep it separate. Um, uh, the editing thing, I, you said you went through it four times and rewrote that book. Uh, I've gone through it, um, each book, at least 15 times. Okay. At least. Maybe more. And I used to drive my mate, uh, she, to drive her nuts, because I would say, I'm going under, which meant I'm writing. Don't bother me. <laughs> and she would uh, leave me alone, <laughs> and I would write, and I would, in my 15th rewrite, doing the comma patrol, or doing the question mark patrol. Or doing the funny patrol, right? Because you have to do one thing at a time. Yeah, you you really well. Then, I, but then I'd start going off on tangents. All of a sudden, I'm you, doing you're the you're writing more things, and, and I'm saying, wait a minute, he should say yes, this because it's yes. funnier if he does that. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, let's back up a you bit. You start writing again, and you start your write again, and mm-hmm. then she would walk into the door. You want some dinner? I'd say, well, yeah, yeah I do, but uh, gee, I got this. You know, this, I, I'm I'm really staying under, babe, and she would go and leave me alone, but. Um, Anyway, so that's that's. Um, we're gonna we have a 
couple callers, but before we take the callers, I do want to touch on our, our topic tonight, which is preparing your work for print. We do need to let the, you know, that's what we're here for tonight is that. Um, the first thing that's important is choosing the title. Um, the most important thing is to choose a title that it describes that book. Um, many publishers come up with cute, clever, and, and humorous titles, um, but the point is, is you need something that's going to give you some idea what that book is about, and ha I, I'm sure you both agree with me on that. Oh, absolutely, and right. I think I think. It, but what I find interesting, Judy, I don't know if you do or not. Of course, you're, you know, you, your book is set. I mean, that is a terrific title. I mean, well, 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 Dawn, let me tell you about that. I did. I had struggled with the title all through that book, and when I finally finished the manuscript, I said, "Okay, I'm going to say it is Life with McDuck: Lessons Learned from a Therapy Dog," and then I said, "You can't do that. That's a lie." <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because you didn't put everything that happened in your life with McDuck. And in order to have that title, you have to go back and put some stuff in. And I went back and wrote the fifth chapter of that book because there were things in there that I didn't. Uh, you really expose yourself when you write the type of book that I did when you're right. writing about yourself and your life. And there were things. There was a domestic violence incident. Um, there was a um, uh, uh, something that that occurred with a bright light and I thought people were going to think you're a kook you can't put this stuff in <laughs> and I ended up uh, re writing that chapter so then I had my title but so but the most important thing is to remember that when you have a title sometimes people will just come up with the title just because it's a clever title and you can't really do that. it has to have something to do with what you're writing about certainly that cover design we talked about this earlier as well done. Um, you have your daughter-in-law? My daughter-in-law uh, is, is a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. She's also an artist of other things. She does paintings. And she's a therapist in the sense of physical therapy. Um, she's taking Chao Tung Tao Song Swa, which is, <laughs> which is a form of, uh, and if anybody's listening, did you that? I just we, made that up. I was getting ready to say, I was going to ask you, did you really know what you said? No. But, okay. <laughs> and she, uh, but she would, uh, it was all that kung fu fighting stuff. Uh -huh. She's only about 85 pounds and she can whip any, any four <laughs> of us in here. Yeah. I left you out, Judy, because you I'm know, a coal miner's daughter. Well, I'm there tough. you go. You I'm hit tough. Her with a rock. Not, you, you can't whip yeah. me. No, you hit her with There's a rock no and that'll be the end of that. But, but, uh, the point being is that, uh, she was great. I mean, her, my, my covers, I think, look terrific for what she's done. So. Well, and uh, Wikipedia states, book design is the art of incorporating the content, style, format, design, and sequence of various components of a book into a coherent um, whole. Morris Publishing suggests, and that's a pretty big publishing company, mm -hmm. your cover is important to your book's success, good design guides, and motivates sales. Um, an effective title, striking graphics, and interesting colors – all contribute to the attractiveness, attractiveness of a cover. Could I say something about the yes, about please. the cover? You've heard, um, "Don't judge a book by the cover." <laughs> that doesn't work when you're, you know, when you're doing a book. <clears throat> and I, I had a graphic designer that I met through the Henderson Writers Group at the um, Las Vegas Writers Conference, which is coming up next month, by the way. Uh, and that's, that's right. another reason to belong to a writers group because mm -hmm. you get to go to things like that. But um, Sue Campbell, a uh, Sue Campbell uh, a design, she did the cover and the interior work on my book. She does the uh, book covers for Stevens Press. And she told me that she actually took hours to go over the, the coat of McDuff, the, you know, because it's all black. And she said she took hours to do that. And um, the eyes of Macduff is very in integral in the book. Mm -hmm. And I've had people, strangers, comment to me about the eyes on the book. So she, she was very easy to work with, and uh, we, we had differences. But that's one thing. If you do have a graphic designer, you have to be able to communicate. One of the things I also, we need to bring this up, is a, it's very important, is the ISBN. Now, Don, you cheated a little bit because you said your son helped you with this when you self-published. So what? Okay. But, <laughs> but Judy, you, you know how important this is yeah. Oh, yeah. to make sure you have all your barcodes and everything yeah. correct on when you're self-publishing. You know, and you really should know what those are even when you have a major publishing house do your book. Well, the you. ISBN, that's International Standard Book Number. Why international, I don't know, because it's for you, the publishers in the United States. 
But bowkers, B-O-W-K-E-R-S, you cannot go over, around, or beneath them. You have to go through bowkers. Right, even when it says ISBN.org, that's still R.R. Bowker. It's it's bowkers. And what I found that if you get on the Internet and just go to their websites, and they're usually, they're not as complicated as Dawn's. It's usually just www.bowkers.com. What's coming about it? What, what's all that Don about? Lewis Barnhart. I that's mean, what, I mean, you're jumping on me like, uh, you know, fleas <laughs> but, in a dog. But, I mean, holy cow. <laughs> but I, I find that, that it's, it's, it's easy because um, you just go, and there's usually frequently asked questions, and I used to just print that out and, and go from there. So you can, you, it's, it's not, very hard Actually, to that's what my one of my suggestions is to go to um, isbn.org, and and it'll give you all that information mm-hmm. you need about the ISBN. The ISBN is important because it tells you the purpose of it is to identify and distinguish you as a publisher, the title, the edition, the format, and the product. So you, you're that number, which is now a thirteen digit number, used, it to, used be to be 10. ten. Um, in 2007, they changed it to where it was a thirteen. But and the- actually, for people who have uh, a book that they want to uh, revise and bring back, or if you're a publisher prior to 2007, you were probably giving the given a, a list of. I have a hundred ISBN. Yes, you can okay. get that many. Um, you can actually take those ten digits at ISBN and go to um, ISBN.org and put that ten digit in. It will give you the thirteen digit code. That's the equivalent mm-hmm. of that 10 now. You can mm. still use the rather, 10, though. Right, rather than, well, they prefer you to use the 13 and convert it. The 10 to the 13 is what they prefer. And I think the, the listener should know that you need the um, ISBN in order to sell in the through, through the bookstores uh, and even on online. You need it, and you also need it to, for a distributor to distribute your book if you don't Right, like and even online, there are some companies that will offer you with an uh, uh, ISBN. It's really better if you self-publish with your own ISBNs as oh, opposed yes. to going Oh, yes. Them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you use your own. Um, we are going to take any callers that are online right now. If any questions? I believe we have Kenneth on the line. Uh, yes, how you doing? Great. Uh, yeah, I just have one, uh, I guess, general question. Uh the uh, program that Apple offers, the iBook Author, would you recommend uh, using that particular tool to uh, get your book uh, to actually put it together? I guess as far as I'm not I've familiar with the iBook. I'm not that familiar with the iBook Author, to be honest with you. Because well, I know when it first came out, they talked about if you use the iBook Author to create your book, that you could only sell it through Apple through Apple's bookstore, and you couldn't sell it through the other meetings, you know, such as Amazon and so on and so on. But See, this, I'm is, just wondering. this is good to hear because this is something I did not know. This is something maybe our listeners, you know, may I'll check into it for the next show and, and let right. them know but about then it. it. Well, then it came back and they redid the uh, the wording, and then it kind of changed and kind of said that you can sell it through other mediums. But I was just curious to know. Had anybody ever used it? If you, if you knew anything about it, and would you recommend using? I honestly uh, know nothing about it. Now, is it like an ebook? Is that is that the setup or the premise, or is it a software where you can actually use it to write? Well, it's a software that sets up the ebook. Uh, you can it allows you to put video in it, uh, graphics. Uh, you can actually use it to write also. So, wow. it's kind of a little bit of everything. But I was just kind of curious. Had, uh, I will research that for you, and I will have you the answers on the next show. All right, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on here. We're going to now talk about... We have one more caller? Okay, go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, who's on the line? Yes. Am I on the line? Yes, you are. Yes. I'm a veteran, and I was listening to uh, what was going on there and what have you, and I'm one of those that just received the Medal of Honor, and uh, I'm concerned about, uh, I want to do some writing now, and especially concerning veteran on this PDSD mm-hmm. in that area. And I have uh, recently heard something about how effective therapy dogs were there. And uh, I am one of those that uh, really wants to uh, write about and, 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 and originate and form something like an urban league and a training center for veterans. All right. Well, let's just ask Judy. Judy, when you wrote this book, um, the ther- you know about a therapy dog, was it? Were you talking about a, a trained therapy dog, or were you talking about how it was therapy for you in your life? No, McDuff is a, a, a was a trained therapy dog. Okay. And uh, uh, 
since he mentioned the, uh, being a veteran, they are using therapy dogs now with the returning veterans. And it's, it's just amazing the effect that they have. I, I actually um, saw on the national news about the veterans now that they're with the, with the post-traumatic st stress disorder that mm -hmm. they're providing therapy dogs for them. Well, here's an idea I have then. Uh, how about, and what is the caller's name? Your name, sir? My name is Harvey Hambrick. All right, Harvey, how about you do this? How about you email me at www.aspectsofwriting. Okay. Um, <laughs> aspects of writing. Uh, Yahoo.com. Sorry. I certainly would do Aspects that of writing at Yahoo.com is what you need to email me to. Um, uh, and I will hook you up with Judy here so Judy can give you some advice on this. I'll be glad to help. Okay. 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 All Very right. good. I understand that. Um, I'm sorry, are you finished? Uh, yes, okay. yes. I'll wait then until he hooked me up with Judy or someone Absolutely. Else. Make sure you email me at aspects of writing, aspects okay. of writing at yahoo.com, and I'll get that information to you for Judy. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Uh, Jim, I was just going to say, I hope you don't mind me calling you, Jim. Oh, that's fine. I, I mean, uh, better than sweetheart or baby, <laughs> because in the television world, you get used to saying, you know, uh, Good morning, sweetheart. Come on, let's get on. You know, and you and you don't, don't use names. You kind of use. Of course, nowadays you can get. You arrested. can't do that. It, yeah, it's harassment. It's workplace. harassment now. Be careful, yeah. Don. Oh, no, I don't. I'm not doing that anymore. I want to bail you out or anything. No, you, if, I, if anybody was going to bail me out, I'd come to you, Judy. <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, you know, you have uh, things with the dogs, and I understand that all both of you are dog people. You oh, are absolutely. Yeah. And I, uh, my former. Uh, she talked me into getting this poodle. Mm -hmm. Jack. Z Jack? Jo yeah, Judy Jack. knows everything about you, Don. Isn't oh, that gosh. a little scary? I, you know, I did it wor worrisome. <laughs> Jack is, uh, you know, is, God bless him. He's my pal, my friend. But I also call him a bed pirate because he steals everything in the bed. I mean, I have no room at all. Yeah, I have a dog just like that. Yeah, and uh, God bless him, and God bless you guys. And I love to, to read your book because I think uh, I mean, that picture alone on the cover yeah. is extraordinary. It, it, well, I'll tell it's you like something. I'm looking at a human being's eyes. It, it, th and there's, it's integral to the book about uh, the eyes. Okay. And the other thing is that um, it looks like a book that the lady wrote about her little cutesy dog that can set up. The genre that the book is, is uh, you see it most, especially internationally, is mind, body, spirit, inspirational, and self-help. And then you see pets and everything, but it's, it, it is not what you would expect. And I expect to hear from you after you read it. Oh, yeah. As a matter <laughs> of fact, you can give me your, uh, you know, write down the... I gave you my card in the book. Okay, then mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go back to the questions here um, at hand, which is uh, what do I need for a barcode? Um, it's very important that people understand <laughs> also when you self-publish, you need what's called the um, EAN symbol. Um, it's the standard uh, barcode format in, publish in the publishing industry. Um, and incorporates the ISBN number, and it also includes the price. And while most retail products in the United States are marked with a UPC code, we're all used to the UPC code on groceries. Or yes. Um, every country uses the European article number, which is the EAN. And to provide worldwide standardization in the, in the sale and handling of books, and because the book industry produ produces so many products annually. So that's important to keep in mind when you're getting ready to publish. But the most important thing, and I cannot stress this enough to anyone, I don't care what you're writing, whether it's, it's an article for a magazine or whatever, you need to copyright your work. So you need to get familiar with the Library of Congress. It's very easy. Just go online. Um, Go to www.copyright.gov if you see want to copyright. How, see how, how or that was done? It was just a really nice short. Well, I don't know what your problem is, Judy, <laughs> because, uh, you know, I think I, I kind of adore my uh, my website uh, handle. Uh, I adore handle. the way you two bicker about this. So. <laughs> I have no idea. You were such a feisty woman. <laughs> but you know something, um, James Kelly, because my son's name is James Kelly. Nah, you call him Jim. I'll call him James Kelly. Coincidence. A lot of people tell you that you don't have to copyright. And you really don't have to copyright. I mean, when you write it, you know, it, it's yours. However, if you don't copyright it, and say down the road after, after you wrote it, say somebody wrote a book, Life with McDuffie, Life Lessons from a Service Dog, mm -hmm. uh, about a collie, 
that uh, was, there was a trial in it. It was a lot of stuff. <clears throat> well, then I could go to that and say, wait a minute, this plagiarism here because here's my book and it has this in it. Well, they used to have what was called the simple man's yes, way to copyright. Yes, the poor and basically, man, the you poor would man's. send out your work to some two or three friends and keep one in a safety deposit box yes, somewhere. Yes, yes. But do you really want to go through all that litigation to prove that you wrote something? I mean, when you can just file it, it's yeah. only like $28 to file your work with the U.S. Copyright yeah. Office. You have to just send two two published copies in. And I did it. I copyrighted mine. And you can do everything online now. You, you sure can. You can actually go online. You, you sure know, can. So. All of it online. Yeah. And did you know that the Library of Congress is the has the largest collections of books in the world? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Okay. How about you're you, Don? So, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Internet. Uh <laughs> <laughs> That's I write, right. I write. I'm not, I'm I, not I, really smart. But. No, I write. I just write. Period. That's <laughs> hey, what I do. Well, you know, I sit there and write, <laughs> and, and and to know all this stuff that you guys know. And well, that's why he has four books, and I only have one. Well, so. I'm not saying <laughs> the four books right. are any good, Judy. Well, I'm sure I'm, they I'm, are. I, I'm not sure. I'm not kind of, you know, they haven't sold, so well, maybe I'm still the hobbyist. I don't know. You're creative. They'll sell. Now, well, one of the other places you can go to for all this information as well, and it's Judy said it earlier, is www.bowker.com. Mm-hmm. And they pretty much control the industry when it comes to getting anything done. Sure Even do. if you want to get your books in, uh, what is that called? It's called Books, books in, in Print. print. Yes. Yes. Um, and by the way, there is a fee for everything we're talking about when sure. it comes to the ABI number or the VIP number. Or, but you'll learn that when you go online and see. You know, it, you do when you when you get ready to set up your little publishing company. Be prepared to spend you know four or five hundred bucks. Oh, probably. easy. Well, you were right. Um, I am a faker and a poser. Okay. Um, you're absolutely. You nailed me right on. <laughs> I, I walked in the door, <laughs> and and Don, you said this that. guy is a phony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can write the book. I just don't know all the other marketing skills that you guys have, and I respect that. I don't like it, but I respect <laughs> okay, it. Okay, all right. <laughs> and well, so my we son, had to. My, son, my son <laughs> helped me out a lot, yes. Yeah, that's good. That's I good would job. love to have had someone to help me, me really. Me as well, yeah. yeah. I learned the lesson the hard way. I shared this on one show. I think I spent $30,000 publishing my first book, <laughs> and today I could probably spend 2000 and do the same thing. Well, I so. spent... Uh, you want to know? You, you really, really I hate to even ask you. How much did you spend on it? <laughs> you really want to know? <laughs> how much? I mean, buying the book from uh, Create Space, that was part of the expense. Mm-hmm. A couple hundred dollars. Oh, that's great. I, I, have, a, I have a friend who yeah. just uh, published through uh, Create Space, and he's, he's really high on it. Well, really? Uh, Good. You know, once have I got you heard information? Of it? No, I have not. It's Create Space. Create yeah. Space okay. is terrific. Is it through Amazon? Is it through Amazon? Uh, Yes, it is Mm -hmm. now. Uh, When my son got me hooked up with it, um, all I did, he did did all the the stuff, the necessary (coughs) IBM numbers and so forth. And what I did was just, you know, I just went on the Internet and ordered my books, and they showed up and, well, you know what's interesting about Amazon? They really are jumping into this, this self-publishing business. They are. Fast and furious. They and are, and they're making good. money off of it, I too. have a friend. Her name is Morgan St. James. She's going to be on the show on April 9th. I know Morgan. Uh, you know Morgan. Yeah. Well, you know, she's, she's written a new book called Confessions of a Cougar. And she's listed this oh. book as a project on Kickstarter.com. And I encourage everyone to go to Kickstarter.com and look at Confessions of a Cougar. And I'm telling you this because if you want to self-publish – now, she's an accomplished – author she already. She sure is. She doesn't need to do this. This is more of an experiment for her to see if she can really do this. And you can actually go there and pre-buy her books, but they don't call it pre-buying. They say if you donate $10, you can get a copy of the book. Mm-hmm. But the point is, is that this is a way for people to raise the money they need, to all the money you need, to do everything you need to do to get your book out there. So I encourage you to go to kickstarter.com and type in Confessions of a Cougar by uh, Morgan St. James, and you'll get an idea of what we're talking about here. But well, Amazon's really jumping into the market. Well, I was very fortunate, and I must say this. Uh, my son is terrific in the sense of marketing. I mean, he should be a marketer instead of doing a stand-up comedy, which is very funny doing that. Mm-hmm. But he could market pretty much anything, and the point being is that, that I listened. I uh, dropped my ego down a couple of pegs, you know, realizing I didn't know what he knows <laughs> and, and was you know, amenable to whatever he was pitching. And he got me started, and, and the second book, he just, I said, Don, I, you know, I got the second book, here it is. I sent it to him, He and pretty soon it's back to me, and I, that's well, the second book. he did book. it the easy way. Yeah, well, I did. I had some help, <laughs> and I had good help. I mean, that was the key. 
I didn't I didn't get out there with people that I didn't know. Right. Uh, editors that it w- would take my book, my manuscript, and screw it up and say, well, you know, you shouldn't say it this way. You should say it that way. No, 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 no. You're not going to tell me how to say it. I know the character. I've lived with him for 15 rewrites. So <laughs> why would I want to have you change it? You know. So I, I don't even want to get into that contest. So he took it over. He did his thing. I got my books back. I got a box of books. I've sold. How many did you sell? How many did you sell well, overall? My, my, well, my first printing was 1,500. And the distributor now, they have, I think it's 150 <laughs> left. But I didn't sell all of those. Some of them were gifts. Right, right, and, right. And, Which, and thank you, I mean, by how the many, way. How many can you say you got money from, you think? Well, probably. I have an accountant that goes through all this. Probably about, of the 1,500, probably about 1,000. I sold 15. <laughs> Well, you're just but starting, I have a, Don. I have a, this is through a distributor, too, but Don. You know what's oh, interesting so you is... you have help. Yeah, yeah, I have help. I have help. One of the facts out there is, and this is a fact, this is a fact, of all the published books out there, you can expect to sell less than 1,000 copies of any book out there. So when you see someone who sold, like we were talking about, Sidney Sheldon had 18 novels and sold 600 million copies, that's an exception to the rule. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think anyone who has uh, dreams, uh, you know, that they're going to be this accomplished author and sell millions of books, right. I hope the best for you. But don't expect that to happen. You have to be writing because it's a passion of yours. Right. I encourage you to go out there and publish. I encourage you to go out there and try and sell your work. But don't be disappointed if you're not selling, you know, 10,000 copies or 100,000 copies because that might not happen. I understand that, and I have no problem with your, with your analysis of that. Uh, people that are just starting out writing, they say, well, I, I want to write. Okay, what do you want to write about? Well, I have this idea about this and that, whatever, and uh, but I don't know how to get started, you know, and there's plenty of people that are listening that are, that are would-be writers that may have brilliant ideas, just can't get started. Right. And so when that happens, you know, and you get started and you st- start with that first sentence and then the second sentence, so what I'm saying to the to the listener is I'm trying to be encouraging. Yeah. Because there's so many pitfalls, and I know that I'm only going to sell a few books. I know that, uh, but if I sell my screenplay, mm-hmm. and it turns well, actually, the back your end screenplay of, might sell your book. Well, there right. you go. <coughs> See, there you go. That's the back. That's coming in the back door. Right. And I have no problem with coming in the front door, back door, Doesn't or the matter. window. You just want in the door. I, you know, I just want to get my stuff out there before it's over. Yeah. Um, and but I but people who are listening. I would encourage them to take a stab. At sitting down either at the computer or a pencil or whatever, crayon even, and write the first sentence. Right. That was the number one thing I always told people when I had my lecture group is just write something. I don't care what it is. I don't care where it is in the story. It can be in the middle. It can be in the end. Mm-hmm. It can be the beginning. I don't care. Write the first sentence. If you write that first sentence, you'll find when you go back, now you have something to write about. You can see it on paper. And, we, uh, and, and we all know that writing is rewriting. Yes. And you oh, can rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite, and it's all okay. Well, and one of the things we always talk about, too, or we have in the past shows, is that when you're writing, you may be going along, and you may find you're going to have a character you need to throw in there. Then you have to stop and think. Judy, you mentioned this earlier, mm-hmm. how, okay, now I put that in there. Do I have to go back and add it to the beginning? So you are constantly rewriting that book. And you're thinking about it even in your sleep. You're in your you're, sleep. You're going to, you're yeah. going At 4.20 get, every morning, yeah, it got me up. But well, you, you know you're me. you're right. <laughs> I didn't know you then, Don. But you're, <laughs> you're 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 right about Don is right about encouraging uh, the listeners to just start. I remember I wrote a chapter, my first chapter, and I told a friend, I, "I'm writing this book. Would you come over? I'll fix dinner, and and would you read the chapter?" So fix dinner, and I'm in the kitchen cleaning up. Uh, he's he's in the lazy boy reading the chapter, and I'm peeping every so often to see, you know, <laughs> what's going on, if he has any reaction. So finally, I saw where he'd finished, and I went in, and I stood there and looked at him and said, well, what do you think? And I'll never forget, and I don't let him forget this. He looked at me, and he says, it sounds like an essay. <laughs> and it was like mm. crushed, yeah. you know. And, yeah. I, and then yeah. I knew you've got work to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, mm-hmm. have, you have work to do. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a fun it's a fun process, and I encourage, like I said a minute ago, I encourage people that are out there actually trying to write um, to to experience experience the uh, the joy and the frustration 
and the, the, the fun of sitting down and actually putting something on paper, and you don't have to show it to anybody. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, that's the thing. You can write for yourself. You don't yeah. have to show it to anyone. I mean, a lot of people write poetry, but they wouldn't want to share it with no one. Mm -hmm. um, I write all the time. There's a lot of work I've done I, I haven't shared with a single soul. Um, I probably have 26 <laughs> books written. I just haven't published any of them, two out of the 26. <laughs> I have several scripts written as well, and I think I've only shopped around one. So, you know, to me, it's, a, it's about the joy of writing as much as anything. Yeah. If you get lucky enough to sell that one script, it could propel you into, you know, well, writer stardom. So. Somebody once said, <laughs> if you follow the money, you're going to lose. Absolutely. Yes. And if you follow your heart, you have a chance of winning. Right. It doesn't say you're going to win, but you have a chance of winning. Of winning. winning. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, Life, Life with McDuff is a book that... I know from the feedback that has has affected and inspired a lot of people. And one of the things that I use the book for is to talk to uh, audiences about the animal assistant therapy and animal assistant reading programs like Therapy Dog International and Reading with Rover. Because Reading with Rover, where a school boy or girl reads to your dog once a week, can actually change their life. So you, your book is really not so much about following the money, as Don said. It's really something that you felt you needed to get out and to And I can inspire. use the book to, to, to speak to audiences and tell them about that and ask them, uh, you know, tell them uh, to volunteer, you know, to help people. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. You yes, said you, you could read the book to the animal, and the animal would, would get something out of it. Could you come over and deal with my dog, Jack? <laughs> Are you having no, problems? No, it Don? goes. <laughs> it's the other way, Don. Oh. You read to the the the, the oh, dog. I see. Yes. Oh, so if I read to Jack, yes, then he would move over. Yes. <laughs> I see. You try that. <laughs> well, um, we're going to be winding down the show here. Um, the whole purpose of the show tonight was to enlighten you a little bit, like we talked about earlier, as far as. Um, what procedures you need to go through when you go out there to publish. And I'm going to mention again, www.balfour.com. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm going to mention that on next week's show, uh, the topic is actually going to be publishers versus self-publishing. We should come back. Mm. Ooh, would you like me to stop by and say <laughs> any words? We should come back. The uh, venom is not quite out yet, Jeff. I could tell. <laughs> should you find a publisher or a self-publisher? Can anyone publish? We will debate vanity and subsidiary publishers as well as the print on demand and ebooks. And the ebooks is an important topic. Um, I don't know, Don, how much you've gone into that yet. But they're they're into it with Kindle. They got the. All right. They uh, have yes. they have increased one hundred and sixty nine percent in one year. Okay. The the, the oh number. yeah absolutely. They yeah. got a pool too yeah. that if your book is rented by people that mm -hmm. if they're rented so many times you get X amount of dollars. Well, I mean, there's thousands of books being rented. And borrowed. Well, I, you know, it's not going to happen to me. But the point being is that there's a chance for authors to, to make a few dollars that way. Now, um, also, I'm going to mention before we go off the air that um, next week we're going to have Morgan St. James, as I said mm -hmm. earlier on the show. Um, Oksana Marafati, and excuse me, Oksana, if I didn't pronounce that correctly. And the Australian author, Anthony Karaki. And he'll actually be calling in from Australia. Um, he's dying to be on the show because, you know, he wants to try and get a uh, U.S. audience, so oh. we're going to try and get him on. Um, I'd like to thank my guests, Judy McFadden and Don Lewis Barnhart. Uh, you can find their links. Both their links are on my website, Aspects of Writing. Um, and I'd also like to say that Aspects of Writing is broadcast every other Monday here on KLAV. And we also rebroadcast every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, on VegasAllNetRadio.com. Mm -hmm. That's every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, on VegasAllNetRadio.com. Future air dates and lineups can also be found at www.aspectsofwriting.com. Please sign our guest book while visiting Aspects of Writing, and you can post questions or comments there uh, on the guest book. Um, that's Aspects of Writing at Yahoo.com is our, our, our e email address. And remember, if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you for listening to Aspects of Writing right here on KLAV. Thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to Aspects of Writing here on KLAV every other Monday at 9 p.m. 
Your host, James Kelly, will bring you an informative look at every aspect of the writing industry. Guests on the show will share their experience and what inspired them to write. Together, we will explore every aspect of writing, including how to create, format, and sell your work. So join us every other Monday for Aspects of Writing right here on KLAV.